is a guy who has done a good job in the past of holding his star players accountable, of getting them to buy into his system, even if it's maybe a little bit outside of what they're used to, is he able to bring that here? Because if he is, then great. Like Then we're going to have a team that was top 10 in three-point efficiency actually shooting enough threes finally. But if not, we're going to have a very very noticeable clash of styles where one coach wants one thing and the players continue to jack up mid-range shots because that's their comfort zone. So if, if Budenholzer can get them on board, then you're looking at something that could be really potent offensively. But if he cannot, we're going to be ending up in the same exact spot that we are right now next year. Initial thoughts. That was fast. Uh, yes. <laughs> that, that was very fast. Or, or have they been talking to him for a week? I don't know. <laughs> That's also debatable. Uh, we are also two for two on golf tournaments with breaking news. So <laughs> there's are. that. That's well, good. We were at a golf course 30 minutes ago and got all the way here. So That's dedication. Um, no, I mean, it's he was a guy that I had on my list last year uh, around the same time when we were having the same conversation about who's going to replace Monty Williams. And I feel kind of similar now as I did then. Like, it's a good hire. It's one that is going to come with its shortcomings. Um, but I do feel like with the personnel that the Suns have and their need to get up more three-pointers, I think Budenholzer can help them there. I think he's a balanced head coach in terms of having an offensive system and being able to field competitive top 10 defenses with the right personnel as well. Whether the Suns have that, we'll get into that. But um you know, it's a lot of people are going to see it as a lateral move. A lot of people are going to be underwhelmed because it's a retread or whatever you want to call it. But Budenholzer is one of the winningest coaches in NBA history. Like he's he's good. He's won a championship and we are obviously very familiar with that championship. But I don't know the the complaints. There was no culture, mm -hmm. no buy in mm -hmm. felt like things weren't uh, under control mm -hmm. at times. Right. Yeah. Mike Budenholzer takes no shit mm -hmm. from everything that that I've seen. He's a guy that holds big names responsible. He's a guy that tries to do what's best in their interest, even if it's not exactly what they want to do mm -hmm. in terms of minutes played and things like that. I don't think you're going to hear anything about a locker room not being under control, that there isn't a voice or a leadership uh, in, in place from a coaching perspective now will they buy into that will that work we'll get into that like you said but to me this checks a lot of those boxes in terms of being able to handle that he has a, de a defensive system that works he has an offensive system that he believes in both have been efficient and effective mm -hmm. in his time in the nba he also had 17 years under greg popovich as an assistant coach he started in in his 20s he actually was in golden state with uh, with Pop as an assistant coach and then moved to the Spurs with him. Uh, was actually supposed to play for him in college at Pomona College, mm -hmm. but he was with him as that entire Spurs culture uh, and entire Spurs dynasty was built from the ground up and then continued to win with different pieces. So this is a guy that I think understands culture building as well. And we were talking, Lindsay and I were talking about that yesterday, that that's a big thing mm -hmm. that needs to be done here. So all in all, from those uh, points, I think he checks the box. Now there's talk that does he adjust well in the playoffs? Mm -hmm. that it, that's been debated. Uh, but I'm also going to worry about those things <laughs> when we get to that right. point. You need to establish that voice, that culture, that ability to win and figure out what you were doing from a whole plan standpoint. And I think Budenholzer will come in and have that. And part of me wonders, and this is pure speculation, but if he was high on their list last year, mm. but he wasn't ready to coach because his brother had just passed away. And maybe that was a year away because this is a guy, and we can talk more about it, but this is a guy that has ties to Arizona, mm. uh, grew up a Suns fan, uh, and has said that this was a dream job for him uh, before. So all in all, I like it, but like any of these hires and anything that's happened over the last three years, I take it with a grain of salt and I need to see results. Yeah. I, I think there's a lot of questions and we'll get into the pros and cons of this hire, I'm sure. Um, but to your point about the holding stars accountable, like 
Frank Vogel was a coach that looking ahead to the playoffs was known for making really good playoff adjustments and that type of thing. But as we saw this year, it doesn't matter if you are outmatched from a roster standpoint or if your players just haven't fully bought in, if you've kind of lost the locker room or whatever you want to call that. So that's my biggest thing that I'm keeping an eye on with this new hire is, is a guy who has done a good job in the past of holding his star players accountable, of getting them to buy into his system, even if it's maybe a little bit outside of what they're used to. Is he able to bring that here? Because if he is, then great. Like Then we're going to have a team that was top 10 in three-point efficiency actually shooting enough threes finally. But if not, we're going to have a very very noticeable clash of styles where one coach wants one thing and the players continue to jack up mid-range shots because that's their comfort zone. So if, if Budenholzer can get them on board, then you're looking at something that could be really potent offensively. But if he cannot, we're going to be ending up in the same exact spot that we are right now next year. And that's the thing that concerns me because this the failures of the Suns were not just on Frank Vogel as much as people are going to try to spin it that way. He wasn't a scapegoat. He had his share of the blame in that. Mm-hmm. But a lot of what he wanted to shoot a lot of threes. He It was part of their game plan. It was part of Kevin Young's game plan. As he's talked about at BYU, they wanted to get up more threes. But they also understood that these guys are good at the mid-range. Is there going to be any budge in that? Is there going to be give and take? Because... I, I don't know, like you have inherently three stars that like to operate from one area of the floor and you have a head coach coming in that historically, except for one season of his career, all of his teams have ranked in the top 10 in three point attempts. The Suns were nowhere near as high. And we can look at that actual number there if we want. His, his teams have ranked second, seventh, sixth, 16th, seventh, second, fourth, eighth, fifth, and fourth in three point attempts over the years. That's with the Hawks and the Milwaukee Bucks. Like, the Suns have the personnel for it, but is Devin Booker going to be taking more pull-up threes? Is Kevin Durant going to be okay playing off the ball? Is Bradley Beal going to be functioning more off the ball? These are things that I'm going to need to see in Mike Budenholzer's system. And we've seen him with the inside-out offense, the five-men-out offense. Mm -hmm. They don't have the personnel for that in terms of having a legit stretch five. Yet. (laughs) Yet. That could change. (laughs) That could change, but they don't have it as of right now. So you have to make moves there if that's the plan. Yeah. Look, I... Devin Booker has always seemed pliable yep. in, in terms of things. And we've seen him shoot threes at a, at a high clip at times. I think it helps that Grayson Allen has been in, in this offense as well before, but those are concerns. And does Budenholzer adjust or does he have to tell these guys you do this or we're going to have problems? And, it does he have the voice to handle that in the locker room uh, and, and do that? And I think there, that's a valid question.